One of the most frustrating aspects about movies can be when filmmakers force an unlikable main character down our throats. They want us to sympathize with them when they're down, but since we know how much of a jerk they are, it only works to annoy us. An excellent example is Leslie Howard's performance as Professor Henry Higgins in the 1938 film adaptation of Pygmalion. Henry is a language and phonetics expert who likes to walk around town transcribing random strangers' words so he can interpret where they came from. On one such occasion, he's caught by one of his subjects, a poor flower girl named Eliza Doolittle. She mistakes him for a police officer and causes quite a commotion, drawing the attention of a lot of people, including another esteemed linguist, Colonel George Pickering. Coincidentally, George was there to see Henry anyway, so they quickly get acquainted. Lending to his boastful nature, Henry makes a bet with George that with a few months of his teaching, he could pass poor Eliza off as a duchess or a queen. Oh, hems, what a sound. You see this creature with her curbs tone English? The English that will keep her in the gutter for the rest of her days? Well, sir, in three months I could pass her off as a duchess at an ambassador's reception. No, no, no. Yes, I could even get her a job as a lady's maid or a shop assistant, which requires better English. You mean you could make me? Yes, you squashed cabbage leaf. You disgrace to the noble architecture of these columns. You incarnate insult of the English language. I could pass you off as the Queen of Sheba. <laughs> yeah. You don't believe that, do you, Captain? Well, everything is possible. Although it's crystal clear from the start that Henry's a total jerk, Eliza still agrees to go through with the bet because with a higher social standing, she can finally get a job at a real flower shop. Plus, it's not like her father cares. He's the only blood family she's got, but he'd rather bribe Henry for money than make sure his own daughter isn't being taken advantage of. And if you want the girl, I'm not so certain having her back home, but what we mightn't be hoping to an arrangement. Regarding the light of a young woman, she's a fine, handsome girl. As a daughter, she ain't worth a keep, I tell you straight. All I ask from you is my rights as a father. You're the last man in the world to expect me to let her go for nothing. You're one of the straight sort you are. Oh, I can see that. Well, what's a five pound note to you? And what's Eliza to me? I think you ought to know, Mr. Doolittle, that Mr. Higgins' intentions are entirely honorable. Of course they are, Governor. Of course they are. If I thought there wasn't, I'd ask 50. Why, you callous rascal. Do you mean to say you'd sell your daughter for 50 pounds? No, no, not in a general sort of way, I wouldn't. But to oblige a gentleman like you, I'd do a good deal, I do assure you. Oh, have you no morals, man? I can't afford them, Governor. Training goes as smooth as you might think. Henry's impatient, dismissive, and insulting the entire time, showing not a hint of interest in Eliza besides winning a bet let alone acknowledging her existence as a human being. At the function, Eliza does extremely well, even managing to fool Henry's best student. When they return home, Henry's glad that it's all over, but Eliza has a breakdown, as she feels used, comes to terms with how much she's changed in such a short amount of time, and feels uncertain of her future. She tearfully tries to convey her feelings to Henry, but of course, he's so full of himself that he just takes all the credit and tells her to sleep it off. This makes Eliza mad, they get into a fight, and go to bed angry at each other. Here's where the film falls apart. In the span of one scene, Henry goes from not caring to completely hysterical when he wakes up missing Eliza. Sir? Yes, coffee, sir. Didn't Eliza tell you to bring tea? She didn't wait to tell me. She's gone. Gone? I said gone, and I meant it, every word of it. I say, Mother, here are the confounded things. Good morning, my dear. What is it? Eliza's bolted. Good morning, Colonel Pickering. Good morning. Eliza's bolted. What am I to do? Do without, I'm afraid, Henry. The girl has a perfect right to leave if she chooses. But something may have happened to her. Because... Sure, he's not head over heels in love with her, but that's still a huge shift that conflicts with Henry's character. They didn't even try to build up to this moment. Henry's despised and looked down at Eliza this entire time, but now all of a sudden he cares about her. Eliza doesn't want a relationship with Henry, she just wants his respect. She says so when Henry finally catches up to her. Don't you dare try this game on with me. 
Get up and come home and don't be a fool. Very nicely put indeed, Henry. No woman could resist such an invitation. Let her speak for herself. There isn't an idea that I haven't put into her head. I tell you, I've created this thing out of squashed cabbage leaves in Covent Garden. Now she pretends to play the fine lady with me. Will you drop me altogether now the experiment is over, Colonel Pickering? Oh, you mustn't think of it as an experiment. Oh, I'm only a squashed cabbage leaf. But I owe so much to you that I should be very unhappy if you forgot me. You see, it was from you that I learned really nice manners. And that's what makes fun a lady, isn't it? Ah. And that's what makes the difference, after all. No doubt. Still, he taught you to speak, you know, and I couldn't have done that. Of course. That was his profession. It was just like learning to dance in the fashionable way. Nothing more than that in it. Do you know what began my real education? No. You're calling me Miss Doolittle. That day when I first came to Wimbledon Street. That was the beginning of self-respect for me. You see, the difference between a lady and a flower girl isn't how she behaves. It's how she's treated. Now, I, I know that I should always be a flower girl to Professor Higgins because he always treats me as a flower girl and always will. Don't grind your teeth, Henry. But I know that I can be a lady to you because you always treat me as a lady and always will. That could have worked for an ending, Henry finally giving Eliza the respect she deserves. But that's not what the filmmakers want. They want a full-blown romantic ending without any development leading up to it. They don't fully go through with it, but the ending still sucks, as they leave us with a maybe-they-will, maybe-they-won't scenario. I washed my face and hands before I came. I did. Where the devil are my slippers, Eliza? In conclusion, Pygmalion isn't a terrible film. It's well acted and has some humor that still holds up today. But the movie is ruined by an unlikable main character and one of the worst underdeveloped endings I've ever seen. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to know my upload next. This has been Andre Darius, and I'll see you all next time. God bless.